What up, man? It's your big brother, K. Reno. Look, check it out. Um, everybody goes through periods of time where they start to feel like things ain't working out the way they would like for them to be working out. And in the beginning, sometimes when you take that first the punch, you're like, okay, um, okay, that's one punch. I can take that one. You know, let me keep on, keep on going. Then another one follow up. Bang! Another one come. Right after that one, then you're like, oh, okay. Then you catch another one. And now you're kind of staggered. Now your mind ain't right, you know. And you feel yourself feeling like you're going to lose the fight. But the question is, because everybody goes through that period. It's about how you handle it. The question is, after you lose hope, then what? What do you do after that? And that is the thing that separates the soldiers from, I guess we can say, the, fold, the folders. So you have to make a decision in your toughest moments how you're going to get out of it, how you're going to handle it. See, we all know, man, that if it's something that we fully got a grasp on and a complete control over, even if it ain't just going right, you don't really worry and panic about it because you're like, okay, I see what's happening. I can take care of it. I can handle that. You know, you keep your composure. But when things seem like it's getting a little out of your control, and it's like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how I'm I don't know how I'm gonna fix this one. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this one. You know, then for some people, panic might set in. For some people, you might get overcome by the stress and by the worry of how you're going to deal with it and you lose hope and once you lose hope that is a form of um, surrender you have surrendered to the problem and have said to yourself oh well okay I guess I, I can't do it I guess you, you surrender to that and once you do that now it's become a part of you that's what it's going to be that's how it's going to be. And we have to make sure that we fight against that at all times. And it's easy to say, you know, somebody on the outside looking in, and it's easy to think that you'll do it when things are going good for you. See, when things are going good, you can think about a time where, or a scenario where things might not be going so good for you, and you can imagine how you would handle it. You know, we can look at all kind of situations. We see things on TV and on the news all the time, crazy, wild, tragic situations, and you see the people that are involved in it and what happened to them and how they do it. And you always, the first thought is, you put yourself in that situation. That's just a natural instinct, like, what would I do if I, was, if I was there? If I was at the spot and they started doing that, what would I do? Now, you can create the scenario in your mind, what well, I mean, if that was me, I, 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 but in, until you're in it, you don't really know. But you still have to create that scenario in your mind and go through that process in order to hopefully, if you ever, God forbid, are in a tough situation, you won't panic. You can keep your composure because you kind of already processed it to a, to a degree, to a mental degree in, in your mind. When, when things are hopeless, they're really not. There's no such thing as a situation being hopeless. It's always a way out. You know, it's always a solution. That's just my belief on life. I just believe that that's a formula to solve every problem. I just believe that. What we, what we have, our issue is that we don't know the formula or we don't seek out the formula. We just kind of just give up and bow down to the problem. Like it's like it's like doing a real math problem. You know, you said how many times have we been doing homework back in the days and the problem was so hard. You you, you started off like, man, okay, I can carry the one. Okay, I just man, make sure. I'm. Then it gets too difficult. You just be like, shh, man, I, I'm just gonna have to get that one wrong. Let me go to the next one. See, you can you can do that in those situations, but in life. Sometimes the stakes are too high. And sometimes there are other people who depend on you not giving up. You know, it ain't about just you. 
And so a situation that you determine to be hopeless is only that if you, again, if you surrender to that notion that it is hopeless, man. You got to fight your way out of it. You got to fight your way out of it like life depends on it because sometimes life may depend on it or somebody else's life might depend on it. So what do you do when, when, when you're at that point where things get hopeless? You keep on mashing. You keep on pushing. You know, you, you take on and adopt the mindset that losing ain't an option. Losing is not an option. It don't. It don't matter what ha you see. The 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 inner will, the will that we have within us. What people don't understand, you know, you got different levels of strength and weakness that exist in different people. You know, so, man, people will say, "Well, I'm not as strong as you." When you you try to tell somebody and lift them up, say, "Man, come on, man, you gotta." Gotta get up, man. You gotta get. Then they'll say, "I'm not as strong as you. I'm not strong like you. I can't do." It. No, you choose to not be strong. See, the will that I'm talking about. Everybody has a will, but you can, the same way that you can strengthen a body by lifting weights or doing push-ups or whatever it is, you can strengthen your will by practicing things that. Bump it up, then make it stronger. So in other words, if you're in a tough situation, the moment where you normally would have bowed down and maybe pumped out to the situation, use that opportunity to say, okay, you know what? I ain't going to do that this time. This time I'm going to stand up to the situation and see what happens. Let the chips fall where they may. And then when you make it through, when you get past it because you stood up to it or you faced it, you have just strengthened your will up a notch. You just bumped it up a notch when you do that. Then you're like, okay, man, it worked. <laughs> We've all did some crazy, some things that we thought was crazy in the moment and we weren't sure about and we was worried and we just went for it. Then after the fact, we was like, man, that actually worked. Like, whew, sometimes you be in a bad situation, boy, you, you get through it and you just had to really just you know, do something outrageous to get through it. When you think back on how tight it really was, you get the chills like, man, that was close. <laughs> but that was just a situation where you strengthened your will because you didn't bow down to the moment. And there's a saying that says, you know, a coward dies a thousand deaths. And what that means is that when you get in the habit of always punking out, always giving up, always quitting, always bowing down, then every time you do that, you die in a sense. You kill, you kill a part of yourself or allow a part of yourself to be killed and, and, and that becomes your way to where it's, it's over and over again. So a coward dies a thousand deaths, but a hero only dies one. And it ain't necessarily always about being a hero. It's just about being heroic within and to yourself. So keep that in mind, man. We all reach points that seem hopeless. But the situation is only hopeless depending on your approach to fixing it. All right, man. This your big brother, K. Reen. Oh, Y'all pass this along. Share it with your people. Teach it to your children. And... Live it yourself. All right, man. I'll catch y'all later on. Peace.